Today we're about to study a very special sugiya, which is a special subject involved with uh, Hilchot Tum'ah V'ta'ara, the law of ritual purity and impurity. We are in a tracted Psachim, page 14 at the Mishnah. I would like to share with you some word of introduction. Um, it's called Sugiyat Rabbi Hanina's Gana Kohanim. He was the uh, Rabbi Hanina and one of the ten martyrs uh, that we mentioned on the Musaf of Yom Kippurim, of the Day of Atonement. He was one of the ten that uh, brutally murdered. But before that, during the era of the Second Temple, and he was at the close to the end of that era, um, he um, was active um, uh, high priest, even it was a second in, in deputy. And the subject is um, how far we go with ritual impurity. Let me share with you some introduction to this uh, subject. The idea of uh, several items that become uh, ritually impure can be in a sense of category. Number one, if we have a deceased, meaning a corpse, that um, that is a, a, around a person who was um, ritually pure, and he touched somehow the dead body, it transferred the ritual impurity. Soon you see that there are different categories. There is a transfer of ritual impurity that carries a level below than that level. And there are situations that it's not. To give you a vignette, the word in Ivrit, in Hebrew, pasul, invalid, applies solely to that entity, but not carries to the next one. Remember that. And there is a category that we call tame, ritually impure, that it's contaminated. It carries from one entity to another. Amen. So if you have a either regular human or animals, they carry the the corpse carry the tumor. Now living person such as something that come out of a person's body soon you see examples or person that carries a leprosy that person can carry it to others so for sure we have we differentiate between utensils versus food and what those entities carries to the next one. So we have, in general, a category. The top is called avi, avot hatum'ah, which means that's the highest level of ritual impurity. We have avatum'ah, which is like, for our language, is the sun. We start with a great-grandfather, avi avot hatum'ah. Then we have the sun, avatum'ah. Then we have the next one, it's called Rishon, Letumash, Sheni Letumash, Lishi Letumah, so it's a different level of category. We also differentiate between Biblical and Rabbinic ritual impure. Many things by the Torah, it's called Tumat Erev, which means at the end of the day, the entity, the person that was impure, he can duck himself in a mikveh and became pure. But there are certain tumot that carries the ritual impurity more than that day. For example, a person that touched a dead body, for example, he uplifted it or moved it from one location to another, regardless if it was male or female, a non-Jew or a Jew, uh, and even a fetus <coughs> thank you even a fetus it go to that 40 days category it's also 
which we call tumat ochalim, that attachment to food, or attachment to mashkin, a liquid, or keilim, a utensil. So all of that carries, and it's biblical. Now we can go further with example of biblical, um, a ritual impurity of dead animals. For example, if you have animal that pe pass, but it was not slaughtered according to halakha, ritually um, in a proper way, so anyone who touch that body, he carries impurity, but guess what? That ritual impurity apply only to that day and to at Erev in the evening if anyone found it for example in the Ohel in a tent so it uh, can duck in a mikveh and become pure um, we have a category of Shratzim which is the creepy animals we have the Baal Keri it's all biblical a person and have a discharge from his body we have um, Zav. Zav is usually a sick person that have semen coming out um, in that sense um, uh, unintentional. We have a category that it's called Nida, uh, woman doing the, the time of the period. Um, that's Avatuma. We have Zava, again, women that have a discharge. We have the Tumat Yoledet, women that deliver a baby and is a, uh, the, the time, the, the, if it's a male, it's one week, if it's a female, two weeks, um, she is basically the same as Nida, which is the law of ritual impurity, and then you have your mate Tahara, certain days of become uh, ritually pure. So you see, my friends, that as far as the biblical, I just gave you some examples, that in a biblical category, there are ritual impurity. The next category is um, certain things that become ritually impure by rabbinic, by the sages. The sages put a decree of fences in addition to those we, we mentioned earlier, but they categorize that as avatumai. Remember, avatumai is the son, the son of the great grandfather, okay? And um, for sure they have a different category. Uh, some examples. Um, any ritual impurity that involve outside of the Eretz Israel. So anyone who, who get to, to that location um, um, in conjunction to a dead body, it's like he entered to the domain of a cemetery. It's also a beta pras, if you remember we discussed beta pras in the past, which is a field that plow and it was a grave there and by mistake it was uh, a large plowing over the cemetery remember Gil yeah. we discussed it David okay mm -hmm. so they, they now the dead body the corpse how do you say the cor corpse, corpse. 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 Yep. it's spread all over mm -hmm. and therefore you put the entire field as the dust the ground of that field anybody who touch it become impure because uh, you do not know how far they plow it, how far it spread all mm -hmm. over that field that's rabbinic another one is um, it's a um, if someone is idolater so um, the rabbi said that those sculptures, those idolatry um, it's considering avatuma. Anyone who who been in contact with them, it's like contacting that category. So that's a boundary that the rabbi put in addition to the biblical one. Now, one who accepted that and transfer it. So we explain that there are different categories. There is a tumat adam that apply to a person, a fellow Jew that become um, uh, ritually impure. Uh, for sure, as we said, it's different categories. And there is a Tum'at Kelim that applied to utensils because they accept and to mind transfer it, but different category. And there is a Tum'at Ochalim that someone involved with food 
Um, for example, it's a uh, attach from the tree and um, and transfer it. Uh, it's called hechsher letumah, the preparing for tumah, because they preparing the food to be impure. Again, it's a, it's a rabbinic uh, category, but um, we'll study it later. Tumat mashkin, for example, the the liquid items. Um, it's the seven category. I think uh, we study it at least once. The idea of wine, honey, any liquid, uh, oil, milk, um, dew, blood, water. Uh, so it's called yad shachadam. That's the category. That anything that it's liquid, that uh, the minute they touch a food, it's preparing machshira, preparing to receive ritual impurity. So. It's a very general, we can say that anything that accepts ritual impurity, it's related to the world we live, which means not things that you need to use for, um, um, like, like broken vessels, like, like stones, um, these type of things, like, like, like utensils that are made out of stones, so they don't accept it, any, any ritual impurity. So um, in the process of becoming pure, there is a, again a different category. One is called Tum'at Maga. Maga meaning if I touch something, physically I touch. There is a Tum'at Masa, meaning if you lift up an item and carry it. So for example, a dead body, the dead animals, um, um, there is a next category, it's called Tum'at Heset, which means you take um, 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 and you sprinkle uh, or, uh, or you move something, to be correct, to, you move something um, that is uh, pure, ritually impure by a person who is impure. So it's applied, for example, to a person who has a discharge or a woman that after she delivered the baby, etc., nida. So the, the, um, uh, there are some who said it's also metzora. So if they touch something that is pure, it's called heset, the moving it. The ohel we discussed many times, the tent that you have the dead body. Just by being under that roof, in that tent, that scary ritual impurity. Um, we uh, talk about um, um, being occupied in this it's also carry uh, impurity. So that's a very general uh, a, a category that the Mishnah speaks. And now, another introduction to the Mishnah itself. So as we said, Rabbi Hanina was a... Okay, uh, just a quick question to yes. make sure I understand. So the only way that impurity can be imparted to a person is either as a Zav, a Balkari, a Nida, and a and you let it. Biblically. Biblically. And you let it. An Biblically. object can't transmit too much to a person. Um, or can it? Objects can transfer in can, different categories. So then the person become, can, can become tame yes, tame yes, from touching a tame object. It's the lowest category. Okay. Now, do, does that require the same level of purification for the person? In other words, they need to still go to a mikveh and as wait until said, the end of the day? Said, and for some category, is just tumat erev. Mm -hmm. It's just for that day. If the touch involved with, for example, a, a dead body crops, right, right, that a corpse, yeah, no. then it's carry more than that. We'll go to that. Now, so the why corpse tumor is then more similar to the Zav, Nida, as much far as higher. what you, it's higher than that, so you have to go through more to... Yes, because okay. that's called a Via Vota Tuma, the highest of the okay. the great grandfather. Now, okay, thank you. Now, our sugya, we're dealing here with Rabbi Hanina Sgana Kwanim, and we explain that because of his not only righteousness, but he was the active, active high priest, even he was a second in deputy for political reasons, um, there are certain category that we derive from that. Um, here we're dealing with Tractate Psachim, and we have a different category of ritually impure. We have a, a truma, a contribution that carries um, um, chametz, carry leaven, and sometimes it can mix. If it's getting close to Passover, the Kohanim needs to get rid of that. 
So the question is, you do not allow by a dime in your hand to combine um, uh, getting rid of something that is ritually pure with ritually impure. So it is here a discussion what happened in a category of truma, okay, and that's truma everybody understand, right? If it's a contain leaven and it mix with a truma uh, that, that, that the other category, but particularly truma, that some of that it's ritually impure and someone it's not. Um, the whole idea is there is a thought that since all of them we have to get rid, this one you have to get rid because the Pesach coming. The other one you have to get rid because it's impure. So can you combine these two and it's a, a, um, a disputation between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi. So we need the witness of a practical a matter, which is the Rabbi Hanina's Gana Kohanim, that he basically hold that if the category of ritually impure is lower than highest of the highest, um, so for example, a meat that is sacred, uh, the, but carry a lowest level of ritual impurity, mix with the meat that they have a, a highest level, but it's in, in that sense a different category, he allow it. Soon you see the, uh, the idea. Um, uh, as we said, this is just a very short synopsis, abbreviation, um, and we say that the very general understanding is if a person touch a via vota tuma, he become ava tuma. It's le le less category. And therefore, he is not only recipient of ritual impurity, he can also transfer it. Um, uh, now, we said that uh, it's biblically. Now, since it's biblically, there is um, um, categories. So, for example, utensils. Utensils um, re receive a ritual impurity from Abatuma, from something that is. So, a person, let's say Mr. A, touch a dead body, he is now Avatuma, okay, because he touched Aviavot, the grandfather, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he go ahead and he touch utensils. That utensil is called Rishon Letuma by the Torah, right? Now, inside that utensils, there is food. That food, what happened to that? It's not Avatuma, they only go from the Rishon and down. So, um, if it's become food or liquid, they can go down, but not too much. They can go only to the second category, which means from the Rishon to Sheni. But if it's a Sheni, if it's the second, it will not transfer anymore. In other words, the food will not transfer it further than the second one. Now, there are different categories. We explain that, and that's very important to remember. There is a tame and there is a pasul. Everyone understand the difference? What is the difference? Help me. Well, tame is basically a level of impurity, whereas pasul is something that's unfit for use. Furthermore, so and I mean something that's tame does not have to be pasul. I mean, for example, you can eat some some tame food, but. Mm -hmm. The idea of transferring, right? Pasul stopped. Mm -hmm. He is not mm -hmm. carried that and contaminated others. Mm -hmm. Tame has the potential to transfer it. Soon you see. So, as we said, there is a concept. It's called tvulyom. At the end of the day, you duck over, and there is a concept that's called mechusal kipurim. So, take for example a man that has a discharge. Or your lady, woman that, um, or, or a person that uh, was a uh, metzora, is a leper, right? So they not become a ritually impure, ritually pure, just by ducking on the mikveh when it's set kochavim, when the sun is fully set. You see the stars. That's not sufficient. It's a follow-up. What they have to do next? They have to bring a offering as atonement, 
and that has to take place the day after they deck, deck in the mikveh. And therefore, there is a period of time, remember that, between the time that the duck in the mikveh until the time they completed bringing the offering, and that period is called mechusal kipurim, that's not yet fulfill their needs, their atonements. Atonement. So, if they touch at that time a sacred truma, it's, um, it's a question. But if they touch Kodashim, something that is totally sacred, they make that item ritually impure. So, but it's a different category. So again, we talk, for example, if you have a leper, he ducked in a mikveh, but he did not brought the korban, the offering for the next day. He is now mechusar kipurim. He touched something that is kodesh, is sacred. He still can contaminate it because he's not completed the process. What about Maser Sheni? If he touches Maser Sheni? It's another question. Yes, it can carry sometimes, but we'll go to that. Okay. It's not yet. Now, if you have the issue of Truma, something that is a, 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 a or Kodesh, that is a sacred, um, the question is, can the Kohen derive any benefit from that um, um, indirectly? For example, if he use it under something that is um, cooking, mm -hmm. and he derive it, um, or for example, he light candles in the in the in the oil that that was not pure that truma impure truma so it's a question what happened or hulin something that was sacred and now is no longer sacred so this is just a vignette a abbreviation for the sugya in the mishnah and the key point is a question of of using um, burning some leaven, truma, leaven, sacred uh, contribution at the time of Passover, because that has to take place anyway before Pesach. And here we have the Mishnah, which is uh, five lines from the top of page 14. Rabbi Chalina Sgana Kohanim Omer, Mi Mehem Shel Kohanim, לא נמנעו מלשרוף את הבשר שנטמע בבלד הטומאה עם הבשר שנטמע באב הטומאה אף על פי שמוסיפים טומאה על טומאתו. רבי חנינא was the second in deputy. He lived during the, as we said, the destruction and after the destruction and um, in many ways, it was a continuation. They call it Kohanim because also his son was the Kohan. He came from a very prominent family. He was connected to the Nasi. Now, the key is, if God forbid something happened to the high priest during the service of the Day of Atonement, he is the second in line to take over. Now, most of his statements relate to the ritual and um, uh, impurity and purity. So he said, in those days of the Kohanim, which means from the Maram um, Chalawa, dealing with that, what happened from the early time to the um, uh, future times, Lonim Neu, they didn't avoid themselves from burning the, the offering that um, combined with Vlada Tuma. Vlada Tuma meaning that it's already the third one for the Tuma, because even that it's Attached to the first one in Tuma, and and it becomes second, but the reality is that it's the third one for the Tuma, together with the with the with the meat that combine with the Ava Tuma and become first one. Even you add additional ritual impurity to impurity. Why? Because one, it's much hamur, it's much higher than the others. And since, regardless, you have to burn it, so is nothing to be concerned. You know, it's one of those things. Like, just to understand, um, if someone um, needs to um, uh, deserve certain light punishment, and by the same token, you have the other violation that he has a heavy punishment. 
So basically you do not impose the light punishment since it's already received the heavy one. So in that sense, since regardless um, all of that you get rid of, so the category it's in that sense don't carry much validation. Rabbi Akiva, Hosif Rabbi Akiva Ve'ama, Rabbi Akiva add to that and said, Mimehem shel Kohanim lo nimne'u melehadlik et ha'shemen shenifsal betvul yom. So you have a oil of truma that, uh, that touch a, something that applied to that day, which means as long as it's not complete ducking the mikveh, it's still considering doing that day. So it always carries a level of a ritual impurity, but it's in that sense the third one. Be ner shenitma bitmemet. If um, someone touch a corpse, so he became the father. Remember we said like the son. Yeah. And now if the the lamp the candle touch it become the first one. Now it's the grandson. Yeah. So, even you add more ritual impurity to that oil, because originally it was a third, and now when it touched something that is the first, it's added and uplifted it to be a second level of ritual impurity. And later the Gemara had involvement to discussion uh, what Rabbi Hanina meant, what Rabbi Akiva meant, and but the idea is that the sages are not concerned that since there is already ritual impurity on that oil, you can add more um, ritual impurity. Amar midivrehem lamadnu. From those words, we understand, which is later the Gemara discuss if that's applied to Rabbi Hanina or Rabbi Akiva, what exactly it's applied. שסורפים תרומה טהורה היא מטמאה בפסח. So we derive from that that um, um, one may burn ritually pure truma with impure truma when removing leaven on Passover Eve. That the time of, of burning the chametz. That's what Rashi said. Rashi said it's applied to the sixth hour or even uh, the fifth or the fourth hour, because uh, since it's prohibited by the Torah law, uh, when it's reached the seventh hour, so therefore you have to get rid of that regardless. Amara Biyosi Eina Hi Hamida. Biyosi said this is not the inference from which the Allah in the case is ritually pure and ritually impure, Truma can be learned. And Rabbi Yossi added and he said, Umodim, Rabbi Leezer, Rabbi Yoshua. Even they both um, have a disputation in regard of burning Trumat Hametz, that it's, it's an uncertainty if it's ritually impure with something that is definitely ritually impure. In a, a case that the Trumat Hametz 11 Truma combined between ritually impure and ritually pure, they both agreed which means you have to separate them when you are burning them. In other words, you shouldn't combine them. What's the real disputation between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua? Al hatluya ve al hatmea. Tluya meaning something that you're uncertain if it's ritually pure or not. So you figure out since anyway in this temporary situation you cannot eat it because it's ritually impure. And you don't have the obligation to burn it yet because you don't know if it's a pure or impure. So therefore, since you know anyway that it's going holech leibu, that is going to be destroyed, the same apply that truma, that the, the, the truma that it's tmea, that it's ritually impure, 
שרבי אליעזר אומר, תישרף זו לעצמה וזו לעצמה. רבי אליעזר said that you have to separate them, ורבי יהושע אומר, שתיהם כאחת, you allowed to go ahead and burn both together. What's the rationale? Because in that bonfire, anyway you burn them. So why you care if you combine them together or not? Um, Rabbi has a hold that even you're not sure if that truma is ritually impure or not, you, um, you should not combine it with something that is definitely ritually impure. Now, I want to add to that just a vignette, <coughs> excuse me, the Kehilot Yaakov, which I have a privilege to know in person many years ago. Um, the great father of Rab Kanievsky. So I met him several times when I was in service um, at the 80s. Anyway, he wrote in the um, Sukkah, Siman Cafe, chapter 25. Uh, he brought a question that Shah Amelech, it's a great sage, wrote in Perek Dalet Beilchot Gerushim. And uh, <clears throat> you see it later in the Tosfod as well. Since we said that Trumat Me'ah, it's biblical, and since it go to burn anyway, that uh, as we said that it's going to uh, burn later, Katute Michtat, which means there are measurement when it's come to ritually impurity. For example, when you deal with oil, when you're dealing with oil, in one hand, the Kohanim have deriving joy from the light. So the, the Ran, the Tosfot, and more in Sukkah said that they carry this ritual impurity only if it's a rich a measurement of Beitza, which is the minimum measurement to be connected and attached. But here you see a situation that the, the ritual impurity it's below than that size for example if you talk in our sugya about trumat me'ah that anyway it's omed lesrifa you're about to burn it so what do you care if it's touch something that is pure that don't carry a measurement of beitza so he brought there two explanations two different explanations but as I said it's way above our scope of discussion, so let's go to the Gemara. So now the Gemara analyzed the discussion in the Mishnah. basar bevlada tuma my havi. You have a meat that touch with Vlad. You remember Vlad is already the sun. So what category it carries? Sheini. This is the second. Why? Because what happened is the first sun, it's Rishon. And basar that touch it, the meat that touch it, become second one. Ki sarif le behade, basar shenitma be'avatuma. Since you combine both, when you burn both of them, my have, what's happened now? Sheni. So now it's the second one. Sheni ve sheni hulo. Now it's the second, and the second it is since the beginning. So now. My Mosiflo Tumal Tumatoika, what's the story? Why you tell me that, um, that uh, this, the status of the first one is different since we're going to combine it? So, what's in addition you have here that um, you're concerned that you add more Tumah? Uh, because remember, as long as it's not burned, you're basically in violation when you're adding more ritual impurity from one to another. So, the Gemara said, Amara Vyuda. Hacha bivlad, vlad askinam. So it means we talk about secondary one, the secondary source of the secondary source of ritual impurity. So again, we have here a situation that we have a meat that it's connected to the second degree of of a tumah of ritual impurity. So therefore, the 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 uh, we call it. Vlad, because anything that it's subcategory, it's already considering Vlad a result. Why? The Havele Shlishi. So now, when um, um, this touch to other meat become the third one, 
and when we combined it with the Rishon, he add more to the original one. The Kasavar and Rabbi Chalina Zgana Kohanim hold Shlishi Mutar Asoto Sheni. So it means that the third one you can make it second one because it's still law in the letters. The Tzlach have a very different avenue here. He said that um, it's not those numbers, it's the idea of adding is the issues. Anyway, the ha en ochel metame ochel. So we ask a question, if you tell me so, so basically uh, food cannot go ahead and transmit, remember in the introduction, ritual impurity to other food. So how you do that? The tanya. Yachol ochel metame ochel. Maybe you say that the food can transmit ritual impurity. Talmud lomar v'chiyutan ma'im al zera v'nafan min levatav v'alav tamehu. So, so the, the, that line in Vayikra in Leviticus 11 said, Hu tameh ve'en ose k'ayotze bo tameh. Which means, um, trace a situation. A person touch a dead body. He went ahead while he's ritually impure, he touched food. That food cannot, if that food touch to other food, it not transmit ritual impurity, the same, not the same category as men who touch coals transmit to the food at the first place. So what type of ritual impurity you have here when you burning meat that is the third one with another meat that is the first one. So Hani Khale Abaye the Amar Loshanuela Bechulin that will go along with Abaye that said that that's apply only to something that is no longer sacred uh, offering. Aval bitruma vikadoshim oseka yotsebo, which means if it's applied to a sacred one. So yes, it can happen that, that uh, one food can transmit to others. A, a famous example is the Haggai, who is one of the prophets, that in a chapter 2 in the book of Haggai, it's a discussion that the Almighty asked him to, um, to search what um, if the, the Kohanim uh, are familiar with a transmission of um, ritual impurity between bread of a of a offering that touch, uh, for example, nazirite. So and the nazirite touch a wine, uh, etc. So it's um, you see here that there is a situation that the food can transfer ritual impurity. Ulerav ada barava mishmei de rava name. He says that's apply only to chulin, um, um, that non-sacred uh, offering, and truma, but something that is sacred, uh, um, food can transfer from one another. So he said, Shafir, that we understand clearly what Rabbi Hanina speaks here about additional ritual impurity to that meat because that meat is a sacred meat that one food can transfer ritual impurity to another. Ela le ravina mishmei de rava de amar mikra male di bera katuga. But if you go by the ravina named by, uh, from the rava that said that this food do not transfer another food, lo shna chulin, lo shna truma, lo shna kodashim, is no difference between the three. Eino ose kayotzebo mai ikalemeima. So he hold that it's not transfer. That food cannot transfer to another food. So what type of additional of ritual impurity you have according to Ravina when you burning meat between third with the first one? Hacha b'mayaskin and the Gemara responds and said the Mishnah we deal with the ika mashkin behadei basa that you have with this meat also liquid items. So if it's touched to a first category of ritual impurity, it was wet, and then it transferred, and even when you're burning the meat, 
while they still liquid. The kamitame mechamat namashkin, that this meat that is already the third one, he touched this liquid that is the first one. So since it's touched to each other when they are connected, it's become uh, ritually impure. So in that sense, if it was the third, it turned to be the second. So the Gemara rejected, said, Ihachi, Haim abasar shelitma be'avatuma. Why Rabbi Hanina said in the Mishnah that that's applied to a combination of meat that touch a avatuma, the sun, the first category. Im abasar umashkin mi ba'ale. He should say that it's both the meat and the liquid together touch avatuma. <coughs> so the Gemara is panel, la nehi the ein ochel metame ochel mi de oraita mi de rabanan mi u metame so food does not transmit impurity to other food by Torah law but in any event by rabbinics food transmit impurity to other food so even Rabbi Halina bird uh, 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 give a testimony that the Kohanim would not avoid it from burning a sacred meat that is considering the third one together with the meat that is the first one even they add more ritual impurity by rabbinic law because they make the third one now second but rabbinics so now we add what the Mishnah said Osif Rabbi Akiva Kohanim lo which means even you have an oil that it's um, um, become invalid, ritually invalid, because it's attached to someone who touch a corpse. So you, in a way, add more ritually impurity. But he said that did not avoid it from doing so, not refrain from lighting truma oil um, 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 in a Beit HaMikdash. So he said, Mihdi shemen shenifsal bitvul yomai havei. So oil that was disqualified by one immerse himself during the day, Tvul Yom, and that day, what's the, the, the Shlishi, is the third one. If he attach this oil, if he have a need to immediate oil, and he take that oil and he combine it, what happened? That one turned to be Sheni, because he touched the, the, the lamb that was the first one. So my Kamash Melan, what Rabbi Akiva wants to teach us, Shlishi mutar la'asoto sheini That something that is the third category is a great grandson of the of the avi avoda tuma. You can make him a grandson, which is the sheini from the third. So they said hainuach. So that's basically exactly what Rabbi Hanina said in the Mishnah that uh, you go by the third and make it second when you touch to the first. So hosif. So basically, the Gemara said Amar Rav Yuda hacha bener shel matechet askinan. We are now dealing with a different one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lamb that made out of metal. So if it's metal, the Rahman Amar, the Torah said in Bamidbar, in the book of Numbers, chapter 19, So the sentence said, and whoever touched the Torah said, one who is slain with the sword in the open field, so this Torah said shall be unclean for seven days. So it means that we're talking here in a metal one, that the, the sword is a metal. And therefore the sages derive from that one who's slain with the sword, so they have the legal status of a metal sword in a term of the degree of ritually impurity is like that one who is slain which means this part of the sword, the metal vessel, become impure to, in the contact with the dead body, with the corpse, that um, they, they carry that ritual impurity, the avale havatuma. So when he put that metal, something that it's um, 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 uh, like oil, that is the third one, so the, the, that oil became now number one, not two. So he hold that the third degree of ritual impurity impure with first degree impurity to contact with the metal lamb. So my dochid Rav Yudah why Rav Yudah needs to go 
in such a far situation, which is Bener Shel Matechet, case of a metal lamp, Nokmei Bener Shel Cheres. Let uh, us uh, bring here the case of what? Of earthway lamp. So Rashi here explains, is a long Rashi, I'll just give you the vignette. Rashi here said, V'achshav kshu sheni avet amek, lomar, lo nishtana shmo lekilkul yotem barishona. So Rashi here used the word klomar, and I explain in my uh, book, Bira Klomar Berashi al Ashas, that um, here Rashi have the issue of jumping of different category. Because the minute you have this attachment, you uh, you make him from from um, from the the third you make him um, you jumping to the first and and Rashi tried to say that it's not the first is the second the only chidush here the only uh, idea here that it's not the same as basar kodashim sacred me but I urge you to read more in my book because the Rashi is long and my book is a long explanation. So we ask a question, why we don't talk about earthware lamp? Umay hosif. So the question is, what Rabbi Akiva's statement add? So he said, the <coughs> ilu atam, tamed v'tamed, that over there in the, in the incidence of Rabbi Hanina, the sacred meat was impure, because in it's come to Kodashim, even the third category, it's still considering ritual impure. And since that a possibility that it can make something else that is sacred fourth, even go the next generation, right? Great grandson. So that's called impure. And in that sense it go down in the line and not up in the line. Viluacha Pasul Vetame. But here the oil of the truma, it's originally pasul. You remember what is pasul? What is pasul? Help me. Invalid. But what's applied here? Invalid. That what happened? Invalid. What's the difference between pasul and tamay? Remember we discussed. Well, tamay can be transmitted from the, where the validity of something and cannot pasul? be transmitted from one to the other. Pasul is, is the validity cannot be transferred Excellent. from one to the other. Excellent. Excellent. Or the so therefore, it cannot transfer to another truma because it's the fourth one and if it's not to his category, to his category in that sense of species, so to speak. So, um, it's considering pasul, invalid, but not tame. And now when it's become second one, it's impure, but it can make other truma impure and make it third. So in basically it go down. So Bekiva wants to tell us that you can add to the ritually impure truma an addition of tuma, even that he make it something that's category um, lower that we uh, we didn't derive originally from Rabbi Hanina. So so if it's an earthware uh, earthware uh, lamp, we already uh, understand that it's a chidush. Why we need to bring uh, the idea of metal? So the Gemara said, "Amarava matnitin kshitei." The Mishnah is difficult in that way in Rabbi Yehuda. Why? Because if you talk about earthware lamb, that is the first category of ritual impurity, and Rabbi uh, Akiva said that you only make from the third to, to second. My area the tan and nershon itma bet So what uh, what uh, we learn from uh, the um, the a, a lamp that attach a corpse nitnei shenitma besheretz we should learn that uh, the lamp become impure by contact with the creeping animal which is much more common primary source of impurity Ela, but you have to say what type of um, um, uh, situation that the distinguishing between impurity that exposed to um, uh, impurity imparted by the corp and uh, impurity when exposed impurity imparted by creeping animals you have to say that that's applied to what? to a metal so if it's a metal the touch 
the, uh, someone that's become ritually impure toward touching the dead body, uh, it's become the, the, the next category. So if you touch um, um, a creeping animal, it's become the first one. So since we learn from the word of Rabbi Akiva that the lamp is basically carry a ritual impurity, you have to say that it's applied to a metal lamp that become Avatuma. And Rabbi Akiva wants to tell us that you can go and make it the third, the third can be the first. So it means that that's the way Rav Yuda explained Rabbi Akiva. Marava Shmamina, Kasavar Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi said that you derive from that, that Rabbi Akiva hold Tumat Mashkin Letamea Chirin Doraita, that a ritual impurity of liquid transmitting impurity to other objects by Tolo. That's different than what we said earlier. So, which means if it's a chulin, it's applied to uh, food. And if it's truma or kodashin, even it's liquid that it transferred. Um, and it's not that the condition we said earlier. This al kadatach de rabbanan, if you tell me it's rabbinic, mich de hainer, you take this lamp, that it's already the father, you know, the one that is the first category of ritual impurity. My kamehani alai shemen. What do you gain by making this oil first one? Ilap sulei gufei. If you tell me that that oil become ritually impure by itself, hapsil vekai. So it's okay. So it's invalid. But if it's invalid, so what exactly you want to add to our discussion? So he said that uh, he basically uh, he wants to add of what Rabbi Hanina said. That you can make it the third. The third can make um, uh, become the first, and and according to Rabbi Hanina, it's only the third become second. So so since regardless that oil makes others ritually impure, so so what's the difference if it's the second or the first? Mimai. So the Gemara tried to reject it and said, from where do you know that that's really Rabbi Kiva's opinion? in regard to oil uh, that have the biblical uh, concept, the oraita, Dilma, you may say, letame achirim mi de rabanan. Maybe Rabbi Akiva hold that that's applied to a lamp of oil that will be able to transmit ritual impurity to other objects by rabbinic law. So it means that um, that's an addition Rabbi Akiva add to Rabbi Hanina that you make something even that is the third one first and they have the, the ability to make others ritually impure by rabbinic more than the third become the second. So the Gemara said, if you tell me that, I mi de Rabbanan, if you tell me now that um, you can add more oil in ritual impurity and it's a rabbinic, my iria be avatuma, why it's specifically avatuma and I explain <coughs> in my book, here is they have a klomar in Rashi, so I explain in my book that uh, Rashi used the word klomar and he explained the whole sugya that it's not that they are all equal, totally equal. The whole idea is that, I just give you the vignette, the abbreviation, that the, um, their level of ritual impurity, the rabbinic level of impurity, equal um, to the one in the rabbinic. So the whole, uh, whole question is, um, um, that at the first stage it's rabbinic, it's not biblical but again running out of time, so read the Rashi and if you have a chance, read also in my book, but said here even you touch this lamp that is the first one in ritual impurity or the second one it becomes the first one by rabbinic and it's additional that can make ritual impurity by rabbinic, the Tnan. We learn in Mishnah Tractate Para, chapter 8. Kol haposelet atuma, anything that becomes second in ritual impurity and make the truma invalid, so therefore it make, make it the third one, metame mashkin liyot chila, that makes the liquid, even that is chulin, to be the first in rabbinic. So the chutz mitvul yom, excluding that that day that um, we said before ducking the mikveh that it's making the tuma invalid by biblical term, 
And even though the rabbis did not put a decree that make liquid ritually impure, Ella, since Rabbi Akiva uh, um, uh, was looking for a oil that become re first category by biblical term, so you have to drive from that that it's all biblical, that it's um, um, clearly Rabbi uh, Akiva Holder, the halacha, that liquids transmit impurity to other item by Torah law. That's the way Rashi understand. But for sure there is a long discussion among the Rishonim, Maharshal, Maharsha, the Ran, the Ramban, Rashba, have a long discussion how you categorize that as a biblical. Now, the um, next sugya, it's um, um, a separate sugya, so I'd rather stop here and we go to a practical halachot. Rambam, Sefer Avodah El Chut Pesulea Mugdashim 19. Just remember that one day, Mitzvah Hashem will build the Beit HaMikdash, and soon all the Kohanim need to deal with all of that in hmm. practical manner. Especially that coin. Right. Especially yeah. that <laughs> six five height coin. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll have to build it. Higher. Right. Yeah, if okay. a piece of meat become ritually impure through contact with a secondary source of ritual impurity, which is an object that had come into contact with primary source of impurity, the Kohen did not refrain from burning it with meat that become ritually impure through contact with primary source of impurity. The Kohen did so even though thereby add a decree of impurity to the impurity of the first piece of meat, which has previously been impure to a lesser decree, which means, as we explained, it's go high from the third to the first, or sometimes to the second. We explain also as a side note that that statement with the opinion of Rabbi Halina, the deputy high priest, and just a, a in parentheses, I'm reading from a um, great colleague and, and friend from the a book of Rabbi Ibn Israel. Uh, he said, just give you word by word what he said, I'm quoting him, he says, Rabbi Hanina or Hanania, the deputy high priest, was one of the sages lived through the de destruction of the second temple. He became the Tana. Tana is the rabbis that lived the first or the second century. While the temple still stood and continued to uh, teaching after it was destroyed, according to one tradition, he was one of the ten martyrs, as we mentioned, killed by the Roman government in one of its infamous decree after the destruction of the temple, and you read it in the literature of the Musaf Yom Kippurim, the Ten Martyrs, as indicated by his title, Rabbi Halina held the prominent position of Deputy High Priest. This mean, meant that he was uh, active in leading the daily temple service and was next in line to replace the High Priest in the event that he was unable to serve due to illness or impurity. Since he became, uh, we use the word Kohanim in the Mishnah because Rabbi Halina apparently came from a very distinguished family and maintain close relations with the house of the Nasi. And most of Rabbi Halina's statements concern issues that relate to the temple service, like an offering or the halachot in purity and imp uh, in purity and impurity. And one of the Rabbi Halina's sons, known Rabbi Shimon, son of the deputy, was also a Tana. So just that is a sign of um, we discuss the uh, issue of Ochel Metame Ochel. We say that uh, that's again, it's a Rambam, Ilchot Shah Voda Tum'ah, chapter 7. Food does not transmit impurity to other food by Torah law. However, it does so by rabbinic decree, which is a, we explain in the introduction um, the difference between biblical and rabbinic decree. We said that one may light oil that was disqualified by contact with a person who is impure uh, or immerse himself during the day but thereby assume third decree ritual impurity status in a metal lamp that came into contact with one who is impure and the impurity imparted by a corpse will nearby assume the first degree of ritual impurity status. So that's basically the Rambam in Chod Psulei Amudashim chapter 19 and we'll explain the concept of Nechusal Kippurim if you remember that we said that uh, there are certain category 
between the time that uh, the person duck himself in the mikveh until, for example, Metzorah, the next day that he need to bring the offering, that period in between, he still carries some level of impurity, but in a low category, so therefore if he touch, he can transmit uh, ritual impurity. We said that um, any item that disqualifies truma, which is an item with a second degree ritual impurity, render liquid impure with the first degree impurity, and that's the Rambam conclusion in Hot Sheer Avodah Tuma, chapter 7. Um, we say that uh, in regard to Mashkin, and that's the last halacha of today, if one was immersed himself during the day, touched Truma liquid, he does not render it impure with the first degree impurity. Instead, the liquid assumes a third degree of ritual impurity status. This is the unique halacha that apply only to one who immerses himself during that day. And again, that's the Rambam, Chapter 10.